my most famous story <laughs> that gets <laughs> told a lot amongst my friend group is um, before I became an oceanographer, I was I tried two and a half years to be a field biologist for terrestrial systems. And so I studied, um, you know, songbird diversity and squirrel <laughs> habitat use and macaws and parrots and biodiversity in the Amazon jungle. And so there was one expedition I did where I went to a research center in the Peruvian Amazon. And I, when I landed, I, it was the wet season. So it was maybe, oh it was this ja January, February. <laughs> and so I, I brought, you know, a lot of dry clothes, but I also brought mosquitoes were going to be a problem. And so I brought hundred, I think it was like a hundred percent DEET. And when I landed and opened my bag, the DEET had melted the plastic bag it was in. So I was like, oh I'm not using, God. I'm not using chemicals. Like <laughs> if it melted that plastic bag, why would I want to put that on my skin? And, you know, you have malaria pills and, and other vaccinations you get. But I was a little bit cavalier in this attitude of like, I don't need mosquito repellent. Like I'm going to eat a bunch of garlic or something. <laughs> so I was down there for um, almost two months in the south part of Peru in the Amazon. And it was like an eight-hour uh, riverboat ride to get to this research station. So, um, And that research station is known for studying macaws and how macaw conservation and, um, you know, yellow, blue macaw, scarlet macaw, red, green macaw, and what they like to use for nesting material. But my job was to go hike through the jungle every day and try to find where these different macaws were nesting and we had natural wood nests or PVC pipe nests or um, wood box nests. And we would climb up into the trees to check on these baby chick macaws, which was amazing. They're like little dinosaurs. They don't have feathers when they're born. So it was so cute. And um, and when we would get to these you know, places, it's muddy. We're like in mud that goes up to your calves. It's almost like quicksand and that it just like sucks your boots in. And then our clothes would get wet and stinky and we'd just do our laundry in a bucket. And so your clothes are kind of hanging and kind of still dirty and not ever really getting dry because the sun wasn't really coming out very often. And that was my time down there. It was amazing. When I got home, I started to have these like mosquito bites that I thought they're really itchy, but maybe they'll go away. And then they never went away. They just kept getting itchier and bigger. And so I started to jokingly say to my friends, like, oh, it's my bot fly. And they're like, oh, you know, shut up, Allison. That's not <laughs> that's gross. Don't talk about that. And I was like, yeah, but this is now going on the third week and these mosquito bites aren't going away. And in fact, morning and night, it feels like somebody has a little knife and they're like, like oh cutting God. me, like cutting away oh my at my body. <laughs> and Ooh. you can see the like red welt but it had kind of like a, a middle hole that was sort of oozy. Oh, and so and so, I had one on my side and one on my back and one on my head. And I was just like, yeah, okay, this is definitely, you know, in the jungle, I knew you could get a flesh-eating bacteria called leishmaniasis or you could get botfly. And this is staying local, so I'm going to guess maybe it's botfly for real. And so I'm one day sitting at work, and this is up in Seattle, and I decide I'm going to just go to the walk-in clinic. And so I go across the street to the walk-in clinic. And the doctor is like, what are you here for? And I was like, um, well, I work in the Amazon. And he's like, oh, cool. You work for Amazon. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> like like the, the actual Amazon jungle <laughs> in South America. And he's like, oh, cool. And um, I feel like, too, I'm getting older. And now the doctors are my age or younger. And so I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, yeah, I was in the jungle and I think that it could be probably botfly parasite, maybe. And, you know, he's just looking at this tiny little red thing on my side and then one on my back, probably thinking like, well, this girl's just complaining about what. <laughs> and so I said he, he was like, OK, well, I'll prescribe you antibiotics. And, you know, in 10 days when you're done taking them, come back and we'll see if it's still a problem. And as he left the office I, to go write the prescription, I was just feeling really irritated. <laughs> this is a segue, but mostly because in college, in biology, 
I wanted to do biology, but you have to also compete with all the pre-med students who just want to get the A's and the good grades. And so I've always kind of had a chip on my shoulder for that. Like, so I was like, oh, this is so annoying. So when he came back, I was like, doctor, I'm no doctor, but I am a scientist. <laughs> and if this is a parasite, an antibiotic will not kill it. So do you think maybe you could just cut into it and see if it is a botfly parasite? And he was like, you want me to cut into it? And like, I, I pop pimples. So I'm like, yeah, like treat it like a pimple, like cut it, just cut into it, get into it, just pop it, like do something. And so he's like, okay. He like kind of got excited and he's like, I'll be right back. And he comes back with his like tool cutting kit and his little like eye thing that lets him see. <laughs> 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 And his uh, lidocaine to numb the area. And so he starts with the one on, on my side and he's like got his little thing and he's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I see something. And I'm like, what is it? <laughs> and he's like, I think it's it's definitely a thing inside of you. And so he pulls out this like like gooey looking tube. And in my head, like, I, OK, right before I went on YouTube and Googled bot fly and they're like disgusting, monstrous little bulbous things with like shark rim teeth all around them. And they in, in the YouTube videos, they're massive. And so the thing he pulled out, I was like, I don't know, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look like what it should be. And so he's like, OK, I'm going to keep going in. And he's like digging around and then he eventually like gets the head out. But it's like to me, disappointingly small. It was like maybe <laughs> bigger than a sesame seed. And I was just like, that's it. So I was like, do you have a microscope here? And he's like, yeah, let's go check it out. So we left the like whatever room and went to the microscope in the back and we're like under the microscope with this thing on a slide. And I have photos of this. It's like the shark rim hook teeth around oh the head gosh. of the bot fly. And what he had pulled off was the like breathing tube snorkel thing that they use. So as they're eating into you, they're still like pooping and breathing out <laughs> this tube. And that's what you usually see on the surface is like a red bump with that hole. And so I was like, man, that one's small. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, try for the one on my back now. And he couldn't find it. It was like crawling away from him. And so I was just like, right, well, um, that we'll just try. He cut like a one centimeter incision in me to try to find it and just was nowhere to be found. So, so he bandaged me up. And that night, I actually had a friend who works in the EMT try to find it, and he couldn't find it. And I was like, what is with these doctors? They can't find the pop fly. <laughs> <laughs> and so I bandaged it again and all night felt it, like, like scraping away at me. And the next morning, I went back to the doctor and I said, okay, I think it's at the surface now because it was, like, being suffocated. So they'll try to crawl to the surface. And so in, he ripped off the Band-Aid and sure enough, the little snorkel thing was sticking out and he like pulled it out and got another one. And then I was like, by the way, there's another one on my head here. And so could you try for that? And he's like, OK. So he goes for the one on my head and again, can't find it. And then he brings in another doctor in to try to find it. And they're both digging around up there. And it's the scalp, I guess, bleeds a lot. And, and he actually said to me. I'm not going to keep looking for this because I don't make enough in malpractice insurance that if I accidentally paralyze your face, <laughs> like I can't afford it. <laughs> and I was like, you know, the whole time I'm egging him on, I'm like, get it, get it. But then I'm like, you know, actually, I appreciate that boundary. Like, I don't yeah. want my face to get paralyzed either. So so I, I took my bot flies back to work and I've had really high powered microscopes at work. So I took a lot of photos and then I put a blob of Vaseline on my head. And all day I was just sitting there working on the computer. So when people are coming by, they're like, what is on your head? And I'd be like, I'm suffocating my bot fly. And they're like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and then that evening I went home and asked one of my housemates to uh, look at it. And it was like a little gray. It looked like a little gray hair just sticking out. And so she kind of got the courage to dig in and squeeze it like a pimple. And out it came. And she made a little happy bot day hat. And then oh I saved God. them. <laughs> I saved them and I called them what sideswiper, backstabber, and scalper. And yeah, I this is the grossest part, but I want to turn them into resin jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the worst part actually was insurance charged me for foreign body removal, like seven hundred dollars. And I was like, 
this is not a foreign body. This is me. Like, I am bot fly. Like, they <laughs> have eaten my organic carbon tissue to become their bigger selves. So we are same. We're, it's not foreign. <laughs> and the guy on the insurance line was like, I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's not going to cut it. <laughs> like, Dang it. <laughs> my biology logic isn't working. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's the bot fly story. Oh my gosh, I am speechless right now. A mix of like, that was amazing and so creepy. There's something about <laughs> parasites that just, mm, I don't know. I think yeah. we all have our things that just make us like, give us the heebie-jeebies, even us in biology. Like for some reason, broken bones, if a bone is in a spot that it shouldn't be, <gasps> yeah, and <laughs> parasites, like I don't know why those two things creep me the f out, but holy oh, yeah. moly! Mm, yeah, well, I do recommend. I mean, because it's like a violation. You're like, excuse me, I didn't invite you into my body. Yes, and then, and then, um, what is it? The monsters in me. I think Botfly was listed as like one of the most terrifying ones on that show. And I, oh. I personally, if you're gonna get a parasite. I would recommend botfly because really they're only going to pupate in your skin for six to eight weeks and then they fall out. And if you want to get rid of them yourself, you just need to suffocate them and then they'll be at the surface and you can kind of like pull them out. <laughs> you don't need a doctor to do it. You can just do it yourself. So Versus like inside your yeah. internal organs or something like yeah. that. <laughs> So I think, too, the adult fly will lay its egg on a mosquito. So when the mosquito lands on you, the heat from your skin melts the egg and then it starts growing. Or the adult fly will just lay its eggs in your clothes. So I'm like, I either got it when it laid it in my clothes, because, like, how would I on my side and my back? And then or it's because I didn't wear mosquito repellent. And I think in places like that where bot flies prevalent they iron their clothes like the heat will kill it mm. and I'm, i wasn't doing any of those things <laughs> <laughs> hindsight's 2020 20. so, now i know <laughs> now now we all know now everyone public service announcements bring d or some sort of very intense mosquito repellent and iron your clothes if you're going to the amazon <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah this is all fun, part of the field experience. 